Battlefield 1 has been announced. The next Battlefield, we know what it is. It's World War 1 combat. <laughs> it's prehistoric, not futuristic, which is great because there's been far too many futuristic games. Uh, <laughs> uh, kind of the big portion of that is Call of Duty being futuristic since Black Ops 2. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and for jetpacks to be around since uh, Advanced Warfare. So, yeah. Um, anyway, it's no. I don't think World War One has properly been done. Be <laughs> oh, I, d I don't know how we backwards count on Earth this guy, but uh, yeah, that was quite amazing. Um, I don't know. World War One has never really been done before on a massive scale. Um, mainly it's just World War Two, or Vietnam, um, and a lot of people wanted World War Two more than World War One initially because I think when people think of World War One, they think of trench warfare, long rifles, mounted machine guns. All looks a bit boring, um, but it but it's not like that. A lot of people forget that there's other combat that went on in World War One: horses, tanks, airships, everything, planes. So yeah, and. Watch the trailer before you watch this video, because then you know what I'm talking about. But aesthetically, the game looks really good. Um, this is in-engine footage, but that's what it says. But this is what we will be seeing anyway uh, in in gameplay standard. It looks amazing. It looks better than Battlefront, and Frostbite 3 still hasn't reached its true potential in graphics. That's pretty amazing because the engine has been used since Battlefield 4, and that's. Wow, a long, a long, long, long time. Well, about not not that long, about two years and plus. Um, and yeah, it just shows how powerful the Frostbite 3 engine is, and it shows. Well, the, the graphics look amazing, and the gameplay looks like it's amazing as well. In the trailer, we saw a lot of different vehicles. We saw planes, tanks. Um, horses. We didn't see combat cars, but that was in the exclusive footage after the trailer was shown at the live event um, that YouTubers were invited to go to. So anyway, in the exclusive content, uh, I didn't see it, but there are combat cars. And also, there's an armoured train that was shown in the trailer. Uh, boats, like big, big vessels, big carrier ships. I don't know how they'll play. I don't know how the armoured train will play as well. But yeah, um, <clears throat> and massive airships. Now, don't get that mixed up with zeppelins because a zeppelin is a type of airship. Um, it's like a brand, so Ford. No, no, no. <laughs> um, and they all look really good. And something interesting in this one that one of the developers said on stage is that, in fact, I don't think he said that on stage. No. Well, what we can work out from the trailer is that damage done to vehicles will affect how it works. So, for example, in the trailer, um, <clears throat> a plane got its wing shut off, a biplane, um, and that affected how it moved afterwards. So that's really cool, and that's something we haven't really seen before. Um, <clears throat> and the airships, I think they might act like an AC-130 in Battlefield 3 and 4, hopefully, um, just raining down support. Uh, the tanks, you can now fit a whole squad in. That's great. Um, and they all have individual roles, I hope. Maybe one will be driving, maybe one just using the main gun. I don't really know. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now, you may be surprised when I say that horses are in Battlefield 1, but they were actually used in World War 1. And the reason for this is because, well, um, it, it was a strange type of war, World War One, because it was when kind of old, well-known and used methods, such as using like swords and arrows and stuff like that, and horses, um, kind of clashed together with these new, with these new inventions, um, <coughs> such as you know bolt-action rifles, machine guns, planes, biplanes, um, airships, tanks, <laughs> just yeah. Um, so it was a strange war like that, um, and I suppose, oh, and also there will be artillery in the game. There'll be a bigger emphasis on artillery anyway. So, yeah, that sounds great. I, I've, I mean, artillery was kind of one of the main parts of World War One. Then making massive craters in the earth and literally turning what was a nice 
pristine land of France with green grass and big trees to just a brown, flat, muddy, <laughs> muddy landscape full of trenches. In terms of weapons, we're not just getting fast repeating machine guns, mounted machine guns and bolt action rifles. We're actually getting, I, th I believe there's a submachine gun there, uh, the classic 1911, because it was actually made in the time 1911, that's where it got its name from, so it was still used back then. Um, it's kind of interesting because you think it's actually still used now, I think. Um, definitely used in World War II. How far it's actually come on, that classic 1911.45. <laughs> um, there will be also different types of machine guns. Uh, there's different types of bolt action rifles. Kind of, yeah, you already guessed that. Uh, there's shotguns. One of these is. Trench gun. I forgot the actual name of it, but that's kind of the nickname for it. Um, and the people who have been to see the exclusive uh, footage, or actually played the game, uh, you can shoot down doors and stuff with those shotguns. Uh, because destruction has been, well, we've been told that destruction has been improved, uh, which is also a good thing. Um, and also, there's a much bigger emphasis on melee combat. So. We've got and we've got like clubs, spiked clubs, uh, you know, just a standard knife, swords, such as a scimitar. Um, there's actually a spear in there, and I forgot what it's called, but it's it's a German kind of jousting spear <laughs> that they used on the horses, um, and that was actually shown in the exclusive content as well. Um, Oh, spades, yeah. <laughs> that was in the trailer when the when the Jerry brought round his spade and whacked uh one of the soldiers over the head with it. Um <laughs> uh there's yeah, so these weapons will not just be like reskins and do the same thing as so like for example the knives on Battlefield 4, they all do the same thing, all do the same animations, they just look slightly different. They will actually have different statistics in Battlefield 1, which is really cool. Um, as I've explained before, the reason why this is, is because it was a strange war where everybody had just kind of moved on from swords, spears, horse, horses, <laughs> uh, carriages, whatever they used to do, I don't know. Um, all knights in armour, um, into this new age of guns, artillery, tanks, so yeah. One thing that sounds weird is that there's no uh, rockets that you can hold, like um, infantry rockets in Battlefield 1. <coughs> uh, this means that you can't engage armour from a long way away, and it will bring a new dimension to multiplayer. Um, instead they've kind of replaced it with grenades, uh, well with one device, well with dynamite and also it, that acts as C4 and also another interesting device which is like six grenades fastened together with a wooden handle and it's sticky coated so that could be really interesting, you'd lob that onto a tank and it would get destroyed. There are actually um, flamethrowers as well, <laughs> that could bring back some uh, <laughs> bring back. I only played it a day ago, but there's a flamethrower in Bad Company 2, the Vietnam DLC. Um, I feel like the flamethrower in that game doesn't work. I don't know. It's really fun to use. It does burning damage to people, so it's not just like an instant chunk of ta health taken off. It's like a lingering. But, you know, like it brings your health down and down and down until the fire's gone away, until you like jump into water or something. But it doesn't actually set fire onto like houses and burn them to the ground. Like, you know, it could have done and that could have been so much more cool. So I hope they do something with that. There's also mustard gas, the infamous mustard gas from World War One, and gas masks. Now, the difference between the gas masks in Hardline and Battlefield 1 is that in Battlefield 1 you can take them off and on 
um, and they obscure your vision a lot in Battlefield 1. So you wouldn't really want to leave it on for a long time because it actually gives you a disadvantage when you're fighting. Uh, in Battlefield Hardline all it does is put a slight grey tint onto what you're seeing. Um, so I think this is very interesting. Uh, it could work. Well, I, I expect it will work. <laughs> um, Another cool thing is that we saw someone in the trailer completely covered in steel-plated armour. So this is kind of, as I has explained before, it's like a knight in World War One, And also destruction. Um, the reason why we know this is so great in Battlefield 1, and maybe the destruction is like Bad Company 2 all over again, or maybe even better, is because one of the developers on stage said that there will be... They were testing out the game once and there was too much destruction, so we know that this, the destruction is going to be very strong and very good. <laughs> and the final thing I've got to talk about <coughs> is the campaign. Um, the developers told us that uh, it will follow the story of three characters this time and not just one. Uh, hopefully this means we'll get a better, longer, more fun to play campaign with a maybe a better storyline but it'll be following three different characters as they battle through World War One. I. I think this is quite interesting I mean I play all of the campaigns of the Battlefield games I have um, Battlefield 3 was uh, uh, that was throwaway for me um, Bad Company 2 I really enjoyed that campaign especially the characters and the humor and it had a really cool moment in the end where you're parachuting down with your pistol out well not parachuting you actually had no parachute but you were going down from a plane that was about to crash and you were yeah it was it was cool Battlefield 4 um, I, uh, I I thought the characters were very strong I, I, I it really kind of brought my attention to the graphics as well the graphics are really good while I was playing it uh, but the the story was, I suppose, the story was actually pretty good. Um, so was the one for Battlefield 3. But the same thing, the gameplay is just boring. And the moments when it is actually quite cool, like you've got your music rolling in and you're experiencing a good moment, it just throws it out all the way. And those moments only last a few seconds. And there's no break from the action, like there is in Bad Company 2. Like you have these cool long cutscenes where you get to... Uh, kind of get closer to the characters a bit more and find out a bit more about them. <clears throat> uh, the Battlefield Hardline campaign was actually pretty good. It was just too short. Um, and also the gameplay... Um, uh, it, it was a bit boring making people get on the ground and handcuffing them instead of taking them out with a silenced weapon. I mean, you could do that, but it would get you less points. I thought it was quite cool, actually. I thought the graphics were really good as well. So, I thought Battlefield Hardline, they did a pretty good job on the campaign. It had com a compelling story, compelling characters. It just probably could have been a bit more longer and they could have worked on the gameplay. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was Hopefully it was influential to you about what you should be seeing in Battlefield 1 <coughs> when it comes out, before new information comes out. Um, and you can sign up for the beta now and also uh, there is a deal on Battlefield at the moment so I'd recommend buying Battlefield, well on Origin anyway, I'd recommend buying Battlefield 4 for £15 including DLC and everything else there is. I, I, I bought that deal and it's it's a lot of fun on PC as well as PS4. <laughs> um, Bad Company 2, I got that for £8 with Vietnam and Vietnam is a very nice addition. It's nice to play in a prehistoric uh, battle for once as well with the flamethrowers and the music. Uh, and yeah, it's just it's just great. And it's, it's quite immersive as well because all the guns are quite rusty. So uh, I think it's a nice addition and I think other games should probably pick up on it. Because in Battlefield 4 and 3, um, and maybe a bad company too, <laughs> not Vietnam, uh, the games are always, I mean the guns are always really pristine, like there's no marks on them or anything. So I think maybe they could let you customise how battered it looks, how battered the gun looks. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching and yeah, uh, I hope I see you in some of my other videos. <laughs> um, so thanks for watching as I've said that three times now and goodbye. <laughs>